Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 22. This is, uh, what, Thick and Thin, the show where we talk about gaming stuff that you've already heard about for the last two weeks, but we're so lazy we come up with topics that have been, you know, sitting on news sites since 1992. This week's topic, Halo 2, will it be a success? <laughs> with me, as always, my co-host and life partner, LBSUTK. <laughs> What's up, Bizzle? <laughs> I just uh, retarded. What's up, everybody? I was just watching the Super Twitch meetings. So <laughs> uh, and once again, um, we're going to bring in Hit because why not, right? He was around, he was bored. So we brought him in. <laughs> just woke up from a nap, actually. Good for you. A little, a little a bit nap? of a daze. A nap. A nap. Right after work, man. After work nap. Full people got naps. It's <laughs> fucking normal, dude. I'm about to nap after this. <laughs> um, you know him as Hitman. We know him as Roger. He's on the show again. Everybody say hi, hi. What's up? What's up? Yeah. Hi, Roger. Uh, before we get to the actual topic, which is not Halo 2, LB, why don't you give a little wrap up of the this past weekend? We had a bunch of stuff. How did everything go? Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, we had a couple different site mixers. Uh, the first one was on Friday. It was the Battlefield 3 Close Combat Quarters, new maps, off. shotgun in your face, and everything like that. It was a good time. Uh, had a pretty good turnout. Went for like, I don't know if you see the video on Twitch here, it went for four hours. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It was a good time, you know. Uh, filled up rooms. Had people we didn't know jump in. And, and people booted them on accident? <laughs> and people. That's the word on the street. <laughs> <laughs> not the, not the most well managed version of a play no, date. Well, it's hard. I mean, sometimes you come in with your site ID. Sometimes you have your gamer tag, right. and you know you're like, "Who's that?" And you never recognize these people, and you realize it's a first post. And but whatever, we we still had a good time. Uh, rolled around, yelling, screaming into the mics. Rolled around in you the mud. Go to What's two hours, mind? you get to hear the complete absurdity of. <laughs> Myself, duty, and uh, Hitman being full on uh, fail. Yeah, I was there. I, I played video games. Yes, I've officially <laughs> have officially played video games. For this is my quota. <laughs> my quota has been met for like two months, right? I got like two months now. I don't no, have to play any games. No, no. Back to no. Uh, Reddit and the iPhone. That's what I do now. <laughs> it's my whole job. That's what I do. Well, That's how I stay connected. Then continue, I, hey, hey. I'm still going on with my segment. <laughs> All right, keep Please going. Go and then segment. and then we did what? Halo, right? We did Halo. Halo was Saturday night. Very exciting. With uh, Master Theory. They uh, are one of the premier big team battle Halo Reach sites out there. Yeah, you're and, telling uh, me. Yeah, they, <laughs> they were pretty good, man. <laughs> were they really? See, I didn't even hear like how it went. I mean, Yeah, they, they were good. I mean, the, the first game, uh, they had their setup pretty sweet and pretty much – Dominated, uh, pooped at us. Their their <laughs> first game was us versus them, and uh, wow, they, they know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, and, then, and then we we mixed up the teams because right after the game it was like you you can hear one of them go, um, yeah, I think we're gonna switch up the teams. <laughs> <laughs> was that when everyone was like sad face, like yeah. Can everyone we? was like, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> we switched up the teams and like. It was very competitive. Like it was pretty yeah. fun. I liked it. So yeah. like once it once you guys got the mix up in, then things sort of kind of actually became. Because I mean, when a game's that one sided, you're either going to nerd rage and throw a controller, <laughs> or you're just not even going to try. Which is just as you might as well not be there. You know. I I mean, I've been in those situations. It's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun for yeah. anybody. They did a really good job mixing it up, and, and like it was saying, the rest of the games they were really close. I mean, there was a Slayer game to 100 that ended 199. There was a bomb game that I think we won one to nothing or something like that. But it it was good, and and the maps they got, the Forge maps they got, I felt worked really well. They flowed really well. You know, it wasn't too crazy where a vehicle just dominated the entire map and you couldn't do anything. But uh, they were pretty good. I mean, if, if you do have that little bit of competitive side and, and you prefer playing with eight people or six people or whatnot, it's a it's a decent choice. Interesting. So you guys had fun. So, I mean, a lot of people say Halo Reach is the worst of the Halo games outside of. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of back and forth of that. It's like some hate Halo 3, some hate Reach, and it seems to be a completely mixed bag. Do you like big team battle on Reach? Did you guys actually like did, it, did you have fun? I guess. Did you have fun? 
playing Reach again? Or are you pretty much done with this Reach franchise? No, I still had fun. I mean, you know, the Bloom was still kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass, but, you know, it is what it is. It's still the design of the game and everything, but I had a good time. Oh, hey, man, how about you? What do you have? Yeah, I, I had a good time. The the games were going back and forth. That one uh, Slayer game to 100, we were, like, losing it by, like, 40. We had given up. We were just like, oh, okay, whatever. And then, like, a couple minutes later, we're like, hey, look, we're kind of in this now. And then, oh, yeah. look, we're tied. Oh, yeah. look, we won by one. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a big comeback. The settings and stuff I, I wasn't too familiar with. I guess that's where they had the advantage over us, uh, like like you said, the bloom and all that stuff. Um, but I could I could see that Halo is that Halo version is dead. Like, you think it's dead? It, yeah, I think everyone's ready to move on. Yeah, I to, think uh, Halo Four. Yeah. It sounds like it. Like I I see more and more people going back to Halo Three. You know, yeah. I mean, it's weird now that I'm, when I see people on my friends list, when I, you know, watch porn on my Xbox 360, which is the only time I can see people on my friends list, I notice that's what they're playing. They're playing Halo 3. They're not playing Reach anymore. Uh, is that is that just because people kind of think of Reach as, I guess, like the throwaway because they were like Bungie's last hurrah or what's the reason? I mean, is it is it the bloom? Is that the big thing? Is that what pushes so many people away? Uh, what do you think, Hit? Yeah, the bloom and the DMR, mm. the the single shot weapon, um, is a big difference for Halo Four. Halo Four seems more like Halo Three with the BR and the movement and your Master Chief again. So, I think that's why you're seeing more people go back to Halo Three um, in the meantime until Halo Four, so they can kind of get familiar get with their chops up. That's, that kind of version of Halo. Because I think they've moved away from the Reach Halo and moved closer to the Halo 3 Halo. And I think most people probably think that's a good thing, right? I mean, right? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah at least the competitive definitely. crowd seems to all be, you know, we've seen we've seen a lot of the stuff coming back from E3, and the guys have actually the MLG guys have had a chance to play it. And I think resoundingly they they like it. Um the problem with that is probably the 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 fan geekness that is uh, anyone that is an MLG guy, they obviously love Halo, right? So I feel like it would be pretty hard for them to come back and say it sucked. Um, so I, I take it with a grain of salt. But, I mean, there has been a lot of pretty good uh, reviews. I mean, what reviews you can. And they played it, you know, a couple hours at E3 with what limited maps they had. Some stuff I know that uh, 343 was holding back as well. So there's not all the information out there. But I think mostly people enjoyed it. Um, so let's, I guess we'll have to find out. But The one thing that I've heard them say... Um Three four three industries is that um, from that stuff from E three that one of the maps was the smallest map in their arsenal. So it seems like Halo four maps are going to be a little bit bigger. Interesting, it might, and it might it might sway more it be more of a big team battle kind of game. So maybe Master Theory in Halo four could be one of the <laughs> premier sites. So you're saying sure. Massive Theory is going to be like even bigger than ever because it's it's all big team battle all the time. Yeah, it suits their game style. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Well, what do you think, LB? Are you you're still excited for um, the new the Halo Four, right? I mean, that's still something that's semi. Absol- on your well, mind. yeah, I, I am looking forward to it, and, and I think uh, I I don't really have a problem with the DMR. I like the DMR, you know, Bloom. Ah, all right. So yeah, it, it kind of freaks everybody out, but. I think the combinations of getting back to BR and, uh, you know, in some level, it's supposedly you're able to go BR and DMR. So you've got, wow. you know, the best of both Oof. worlds. Yeah. So that will be good. Um, <clears throat> that's the first time I heard that, that one of the maps was the smallest map. So that actually has me a little concerned because just trying to think of the maps that I saw. They're pretty big, and if right? It's the one that looks kind of like if it was Narrows, was that the small one or was it the one with the. The tier with the, the two robot. levels, yeah, yeah. Which one? Do you um, know which one they were talking I'm about? I'm not. I'm not familiar with the names. I know he did name it. I just don't remember which one it was. The, the exact wording was: "This is one of the smaller maps on our rotation." So, hmm. and that maps like those maps are pretty big in size. Like yeah, yeah, like in a general. medium sized map in my yeah yeah. yeah. No, I'm so, with yeah. you on that. Definitely. When I was watching it, I felt that was a medium sized map by no means yeah. that I think that was a smaller size map now I'm kind of wondering if you know what are they thinking for a big map are they thinking something back to like waterworks are they thinking something 
you know. Oh God, Waterworks, what a huge sand trap. Map. Yeah, oh well, sand trap. You know, sand trap to me really wasn't that big. That was you know somewhere in between medium and big. But you know, are they thinking like grand scale? You know, right. I, I don't know. And if that's the case, then. You know, like the MLG guys said, yeah, they had a good time and they like what they played, but they're going to still need to play 200, 300, 400 games into it to really get a good yeah, game Yeah, to really know. Yeah, People won't complain until there's money on the line. I think once, like, we see a competition and people get to play the maps, they're, you know, trying to learn from them and, and actually get in depth, then you might start to see a little bit of the, eh, this was maybe kind of shitty and the way they dis- did this was kind of shitty, but... As always, as soon as E3 is out, people see it for the first time, they're always going to say, best game I've ever played. <laughs> I mean, it seems like every year, people said that about Reach, people said that about Halo 3, um, you know, those first those first ratings that you get. And that's why I think doing a review on a game, um, at least from our take, we tend to do reviews at Tool to Play a little bit later, not just because people don't send us games, because you don't, you jackasses, send us more games, but also because if we wait a little bit, and, there, and we wait a little bit of time and actually play the game and wait for the feedback or the hype to sort of dissipate, I think you get a better review. Because mm-hmm. I think that initial review, no matter what you do, I mean, and it's, I don't blame any reviewer. I don't, you know, it's hard when someone's giving you a free item. You're doing a review. You're trying to be as objective as you can. You want to take yourself out of the situation. No matter what you do, there's the fact that you're getting some free shit. You are the first to play that game, and so I think no matter what you do, it skews. It's the hype. It skews the, you know, if you look at the best example, and I know this is probably going to make, I'll be a little pissed, but the best example is if you look at D3 right now. If you look at the Metacritic score, and I know we were talking about today, LB doesn't like Metacritic. I understand why. The ratings reviews for D3 is around at 8.9. I think it was 8.8, 8, 8.9 today. Um, but the user reviews are a three point, what, three two? Someone's gonna have to go look for me in chat. It's like a three two or three nine. And that is a really large disparity. Like in, in between the two, that's a pretty big swing. And I think a lot of the people that are actually playing the game and can really get into it and see the frustrations that other users have, have a little bit more of a sway in, what, in how they actually vote on that game. Whereas a guy, and I said it too, when I first picked up D3, I played it all the way through. I loved it. It was totally worth my $60, and I would say anyone that wants to play that game once through, it's a great game. Where after that, once you start to realize, well, I'm going to be doing this for, for forever, this doesn't end, you just kind of recycle and try to get better gear, Try to get, it's like an MMO, um, you kind of start to see the flaws. Uh, when you start to get to the really hard stuff and you get one shot as soon as you spawn, um, and there's these huge elite packs that you can't even do anything about, you start to get a little bit more frustrated with the game, and I think that skews a little bit of your ratings. So that's that's a small tangent I'm going to go on with reviews, but um, I think that's kind of... I mean, don't you at least agree, LB, that over time you get a little bit of a better sense about a video game, like a real review? I think time definitely gives you a better idea for a better feel of the game. I think it would be more successful if companies did... You know, you got your first release review and then revisited that maybe like a month later. Yeah. Or, you know, three weeks later, whatever the case is, and be like, okay, our follow-up review, you know. Uh, there, I think you get the, the better feel of like, oh, well, there were these problems or the, there are these glitches or this is really cool or this is really lame now. So, you, yeah, you definitely get a better feel of the game the more time you get to put into it. Right. right. What do you think, Hit? I mean, you, you like the later review or do you actually read a review and think, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about? I mean, or is there any re- site you read that you prefer that does reviews that maybe is a little better? Yeah, a preferred site is IGN. Uh, really? I, I, go by their, I go by their ratings. Wow. People... Uh, only because I listen to their podcasts and read all their – read not well, I read some of their articles. <laughs> On this week's show, the topic is going to be – and I, th- I think plenty of people have seen it in the news, if you want to call it the news. Um, but that is cloud gaming. Right. Uh, I think it was pretty big last year at E3 when on live came on and they kind of did the whole thing. You can play on live, you know, anywhere you want in the world. You download a box or download a box. You buy a box and that's kind of like your unit. Or if you have a computer, you can play it through your computer. Basically, the idea is you stream the games from anywhere in the world to your PC. It's not about your graphics card. 
It's about how much bandwidth you have. The more bandwidth you have, the better the graphics are. Basically, if anyone knows, Netflix does a similar thing with how they stream their movies. So basically, you can get an HD movie streamed live to your house uh, with a subscription base, obviously. And it's a similar thing, except this time you're actually playing full 3D games. Now, in the news, and the reason we decided to kind of attack this, Sony recently bought a company, and I, I'm going to botch this name. How do you even pronounce it? Gai- oh, yeah. Gai- Kai? Gakai? 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 Kakaki? Kakaballs? I honestly don't know. So the first thing they should do after they buy this game is they should change the name. Change the name. Change yeah. the name immediately. I don't like products where I can't pronounce the name. It makes me sound stupid, because I am. But anyway, so they, they were at E3 this year. This is before Sony bought them, uh, and they unveiled their master plan, what is a direct competitor to OnLive. And for the longest time, everyone thought Microsoft was going to buy OnLive, which now turns out they're not. Um, but Sony decided to spend $380 million uh, with an agreement with them. So to give everyone a little refresher, cloud-based gaming service Gaikai, or Gaikea, I don't even know, um, is now sold for uh, it's $380 million, like I said, agreement slightly below the $500 million band-aid about, uh, about it in some rumors last week. So everyone thought it was going to reach five hundred. Didn't get quite that high. Three eighty, dollars Pretty good. It's a pretty good day. Um... The uh, SCE boss, Andrew House, promised that the union of Gaikai's engineering talent with his company platform knowledge, Sony, uh, would lead to unparalleled cloud entertainment experiences. And for his part, the CEO, David Perry of Gaikai, said he was honored to help Sony grow their ecosystem. So these two basically are getting together. And if you guys didn't see the, um, you got to get out there and find it. I'll have to find the video for later and maybe put it into the stream. But um, at Google's last conference, at their I.O. conference, they did a little demo of using Gaikai streaming service through Chrome, your browser. So just like you would do Netflix, but through a brow- right, right through the browser, not through a program software you got to open. Um, you just plug it in Google. There's a little add-on. And he was playing, I believe it was Rage. Is, is Rage a game? Rage no, is a no, game. no, it was yeah. Bulletstorm. Oh, it was Bulletstorm. Bullet. Right, it was Bulletstorm. Yeah. Uh, and so they figured out, the guys at Google teamed up with the guy, Kai. God, I hate saying this name. And <laughs> they played a full round of Bulletstorm, full 3D graphics. They used a controller, all that stuff. Pretty kick-ass technology. And so ever since that, and then obviously Sony buying them, now the rumors are starting to sway and say, Maybe the next platform isn't a new 720 or a new PS4. Maybe they're going to try to really push this streaming service as their next platform. This way they don't have hardware issues. Really, it comes down to the consumer having the bandwidth to play the game. Um, and I guess the question that I've asking, I'm asking everyone here on the panel today is, do you think that the next platform could be this Gaikai service? Maybe not directly, maybe not PS4, but PS5, let's say. What do you think, Elby? Do you think cloud gaming is ready for prime time? As long as the bandwidth requirements aren't crazy. I mean, still in the United States, the average bandwidth compared to the rest of the world is, we're like in the middle of the pack, the last thing I read. So if you need like an upstream, you know, if you're playing something competitive, you know, where you need reaction times, you need, you can't have a whole bunch of stutter and stuff, you better have at least one, one and a half, two, maybe even three up to really enjoy that game. If we can get along with that, or if the bandwidth requirements aren't that high, I think it, it's totally doable. I think mm-hmm. it can happen. Now, what do you think, Kit? Is it is it something we're going to see, or no? No. Wow. No, I don't think we're there. Now, do you think, think we're, we're limited by the technology, or we're limited by the bandwidth? Is that I mean, in that 15 seems. Fifteen years? Thing. You don't think we're going to be there in fifteen years? Fifteen years? Yeah, if this was PS Five. I don't think we'll be there for the next generation. I think we'll be there partially in the next generation after that. Hmm. Interesting. I think that's that's when you start to like see it push mainstream. Like I could see the the Xbox 1080 being having no optical drive at all, and it's all download to your hard drive kind of thing cloud gaming in in a sense but no i don't think we'll i think we might see partially of it next generation but i don't think it'll be full steam until the generation after that so yeah maybe 15 years well here's the thing 
So I did a little bit of the research because I actually like to sometimes prepare when I'm really bored. Right now, um, they're claiming that they have pretty instantaneous reaction time. Now, I'm looking, I'm trying to find on their site, too, if they have an actual bandwidth, you know, what they're, what they're saying your, your minimum requirement is. I'm sure they do, but I can't see it right now. But they are saying, and here's, the, here's basically the quote, do I need to buy the fastest 3D computer or do I need any special hardware? Quote, nope, all you need is a web browser running the latest version of Flash and Java. In fact, Gaikai makes it possible to play all resource-intensive 3D games on devices never before possible. This includes laptops, netbooks, tablets, and even smartphones and other mobile devices. We run the games through an ultra-high-end server with the latest and greatest hardware, so the only requirement that you need is that it can be displayed full screen on your monitor. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, yeah. Sony obviously backed them. They obviously think that this is possible. To be fair, I saw some demos uh, at E3, and I, we didn't talk about this a lot, which I, I don't know why. Um, <clears throat> but I, and, and also, even with OnLive, they, they announced their browser stuff as well. But it looked really good. So why not, if you're a company like Sony, why not take that middleman out, stop researching the hardware, let PCs run everything like they do best anyway, and let the consumer just pop open a browser and play a little bit of World of Warcraft or play a little bit of Halo. Uh, that would certainly get it on every device in the world, right? You wouldn't have to worry about multi-platform. You wouldn't have to worry about, you know, the only hardware you'd have to worry about is selling your controller. Um, and you'd give the freedom to the user to use a mouse and keyboard if they want. So let's do a little pretend. Let's pretend we have awesome bandwidth and that the United States isn't the single worst producer of bandwidth in the entire world. Because we are. We're shitty. Everyone has internet. <laughs> everyone has internet. And everyone has faster internet than we do. Um, which is awesome. So taking that into account, let's pretend that is not the case. And this technology does work. All right. Would you then say that it's almost certain or very possible that the next platform would be streaming only? What do you think? Like the seventh, like the next one, like the seventh. Next gen, baby. Four. PS4. Because remember, it's not limited by hardware. They're saying it right here. They have the latest hardware. So the graphics you get delivered on your screen are basically coming from someone's kick-ass, insane rig, latest shit. Crazy graphics stream directly to you. What do you think? I I just can't see downloading Halo Four on the first Tank, day come here. and jumping into multiplayer that day. I can't. I don't see it. I it, no. I just don't see it. The servers <laughs> will be overloaded for sure. Halo Four first day multiplayer. Well, I, let me say. I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I understand, I understand being, you know, skeptics, but if they're running the hardware, if, the, if it's their hardware, why, why would that, you know, play any different role than how it is today? They, all they have to do is scale up their hardware and get more of it, and you they leave it to them. They Diablo 3, right? See, yeah, see that, uh, sorry, here, man, I'm going to jump in. No, I'll go ahead. With yeah. you on this too. Even nowadays, look at PC games with Diablo 3, or, you know, you still had that shit fest a few days, you know, people not being able to stay connected or even get connected right now. <laughs> so yeah, and, and you had to be connected to their servers in order to play that game. So in a sense, that kind of is cloud gaming, except you're just not downloading anything from them constantly. Right. But I mean, sir, there's, I think there's a big, I think we're, the point I think that's being missed here is there's a big difference between the networking, right? The server to server, computer to computer interaction and the actual sure. experience of the game. I agree that if a lot of people are having to stream that much information, which I can only assume is a shit ton because you're, you're doing a full high def game. Um, I could see some, some networking issues there. The, the, the upshot to this, and, and I don't think a lot of people even think of this or talk about this, but you now have these units that are right next to each other in a cluster somewhere, a server farm. When you're talking about the interaction between those two, that's like, let's say LB's on a server here. Here's my little LB server finger. And then I'm on a server here. We're in the same room. But we're both in a different place, obviously, on the planet. But in that room, we're together. In terms of networking those two together, you have the most lightning fast reaction times between... It's, it's a LAN. You're basically right. playing the game on a LAN. It's just then streaming to your house. Yeah, I never thought of it that way. So, yeah. you know, in a way, in terms of your only limitation, again, is it getting to your house? How fast can it get to your house? 
Um, and I don't know if anyone's heard of CDNs or all these other things, but they're basically clusters around your area where you live um, that serve directly to your house. So let's say there's a CDN cluster in Chicago. There's one by you. And all that stuff is sort of working. They're talking to each other and it's localized. Uh, and you're playing with friends in your area or even, you know, further away. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I can definitely see it being further along than I think we think it is. Um, the only reason why I, would, I don't like it is because I don't like the fact that I'm not owning anything. Right. Like, what if the internet is out one day at my house? Like, I won't be able to play their game because I can't connect to the internet. I like having that physical object in my hand that I can play in, like, 40 years from now. Right. But... I, that's the only reason. That's another reason why I wouldn't like cloud gaming. But I can see why a lot of people might like that. Like the people that always return their games or resell their games or get rid of them after some time. I can see that. But for someone that wants a physical object, cloud gaming sucks. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> interesting. Cloud gaming sucks. Well, I think there is, that's a fantastic point because I think a lot of the people still to this day. I'm starting to get away from it, but I still do like, you know, getting the spine of my little, you know, whatever you want to call it, booklet of a CD that I put in my little shelf. I like having it on there. I like taking it out. I like putting it in. That's a pun. No one, t- no one took it. Good for you. Um, <laughs> but I like that. And I like, of course, then being able to sell it if I don't want it anymore. And we're already seeing, and this is, this is why streaming, I think, will eventually become the way to go. Be- exactly what hit saying is that leaves all the control of the product in the hands of the developer and the publisher. Once they take out the physical media and once we stream and even steam, I mean, as, as much as everyone loves steam and loves to download the games from steam, you can't sell your game. You can trade it. Sometimes they have little things you can gift it and all these other, uh, other options. But for the most part, it's, it's steam's game that you've licensed from them that you then play. Uh, and it certainly would definitely go to this route once they got it, they figured it out, I think. So I would think that this is a huge move for them just to try to get full control over the gaming market and really take any consumer action out of it. I think it would kill any, you know, secondhand store. They would all obviously die out. Um, and you'd see all that DLC content even being even more prevalent because it's added straight into the game. You don't even have to download it. I mean, what do you think LB? Is that, would that make you nervous? Is that part of it sort of piss you off? Yeah, I mean, it does a little. And and how long are they going to guarantee that I'm going to be able to access whatever game I want to play? You know, are they going to just be running the servers for a couple years? Are they going to be running for six months? You know, are they going to be running it for five years? You know, who knows? Do we know if, how much on live uh, charges and stuff? Is it a yearly subscription or is it per game subscription? Well, I can even, I'll even look it up. But um, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt over you. Just curious. No, as to, no. Yeah. no it's yeah. and it's and it's a fair it's a fair question, too. I mean, I think a lot of it. I think that's the prop. The, the difference between on live and this, I could be wrong, but I'm just going off what I know. I, I think the difference between on live and what Geiku is doing, Geiku, Geiko, let's call him Geiko because we all need insurance, right? <laughs> I'm OK with Geiko. You, is everyone OK with Geiko for the rest of the show? Yeah, I'm not OK. I'm going to be difficult. OK, be difficult. Right. The thing with Geiko is. It's great insurance. No, the thing with Geico is that it um, it's it's a service that they give to publishers to use. Like it's it's a service that Sony then well now Sony owns it, right? I feel like with OnLive, I don't think you I don't think you actually pay you know Geico to do the service. I think you're paying Sony and they're using that technology to serve you their games. That's the way I think it is. Whereas OnLive is its own service and you pay OnLive directly. Um, not that that makes a difference. I mean the technology is being used either way. But I think people would certainly be a lot more comfortable giving their money to Sony, as strange as this sounds, because you know Sony's going to be around a while. If you give money to a place like OnLive, there's a pretty big part of me that's like, hey, will OnLive even be here in two years? I mean, don't you agree that at least for for Geiku, Geico, whatever you want to call it, don't you think that at least for them, this is a really great move to be with Sony? I mean, this gives them credibility, right, and lasting, lasting power. Wouldn't you say, Albie? Uh, yeah, definitely. If, if Sony's going to kick out the cash for you, you know, it actually legitimizes what you've been doing. Now, I don't know, between me, between Gaiku, Haiku, whatever, haiku, like haiku. and on live, 
I'm more familiar with hearing on live because I, I maybe I've just seen more marketing for it or what what not. But you know, between the two companies, I would have been like, oh yeah, on live. If someone you know before this week it was or two weeks ago just went up and be like, hey, do you do you game on Gaiku? I would have been like, what? You know, right? That type of thing. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe you know it's something Sony believes in. Maybe it will be the next thing, you know, or maybe Sony is just going to buy them up to throw them away. That could be a yeah. whole other thing as well. You know, other companies do the same thing. And yeah, get markets. rid of the technology. Sure. Yeah. I, you, you know, it, you have big beer companies that buy smaller micro brews just, just to, to yeah. eliminate them. Right. Well, uh, what were you saying, Hit? What do you think? Yeah, I definitely think Sony was um, looking ahead with this move. I don't think it's something they want to implement right away, but it's definitely uh, just in case we got these guys now. Well, I'll say this, and I'm and I'm looking at you know I've kind of gone around looking at on live stuff now. Uh, if you want to buy on, you can buy the full unit that plays on your TV. It's a little box, about you know yay big, kind of small. Comes with a controller. Ninety nine bucks for the system. I'm not seeing anything about, and I don't know if they're just hiding the prices or or what, but I'm not seeing anything about the subscription fee. This is just for the hardware. Um, so maybe you just buy per game. Maybe it could be a la carte, which would be a very smart move. Uh, it's three megabits or higher. That's what they require for their streaming service. I don't know that's what if that's what Geico uses. I'm assuming it's probably similar. Uh, but th- I, you think three MB, uh, MB, uh, MB, uh, Mbps is a lot. That's not a lot anymore, is it? Down? I, I, I don't have three up. No, and not three up. Fastest, not three up. No, 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 no. no. Three down. Oh, there three is down. no upload requirement. You're you're downloading from a server, mm. so you don't need this crazy upload speed. Like you, you're not hosting shit. Oh. You're grabbing it. You're sucking it in. No, three, three, that's three's pretty, not a lot. No, that's pretty good, right? Yeah, I, I think you'd have a, a large, at least for the U.S., you'd have a good portion of them. I mean, unless you're like BC, who lives in the freaking sticks, and he's got. Oh, BC's yeah. not allowed to play video games. He does no. that to himself. He's got like, you know, one and a half down and like 0. 0.5 up or something right. like that. But, ah. the, you know, three down, no, that's not really a lot to ask. You know, I've got the, the second fastest tier on mine and I'm like 25 down, five up. So, right. You know, yeah. I mean, I game. think I, I live in a major city, obviously, so I can't. It's hard for me to gauge, but I have 30 down. You know, I mean, I feel like 30 down is not even I, I actually don't feel like I have great Internet. You know, I have thirty down. I mean, maybe there's people out there still rocking the one, the one down, but that's really rare, man. Even with DSL right now, like the lowest things you can get for like some really shitty ADSL in the middle of nowhere, BC land, let's call it. That's still not. That's like really bad. That I feel like two megs is like the lowest you're gonna get in broadband. Or I don't even think they're allowed to call it broadband anymore if it's not at least like over one. So I don't know. I mean, if that's if that's what Geico's got, and that's exactly what Sony wants to convert, I, I don't know. I'm maybe I'm I'm glad that you guys disagree with me because I think it it's it's nice to see a different viewpoint. But I actually think you could see this much much sooner, especially with Sony's branding on it. I can see it. Maybe not don't, their only don't. hardware. But what part do you of it. think that the suppliers would react to a move like this? Well, like the Best Buys and uh, Walmarts and uh, GameStops, like all of a sudden Sony just stops selling video games. Well, here's How pissed do you think they would be? Oh, I think they'd be raging pissed. I think the hardest hurdle for any of these companies is the mom and pop shops and the brick and mortars and the big boxes. But I think that's been this way for forever. And one of these days they're just going to say, fuck you, we want more money. And they're going to walk away. So I, I think that piece of this puzzle is inevitable. I think when companies see what Steam's doing in revenue every year and how it's growing and how they're fucking making money hand over fist, they're looking at themselves like, why are we shipping these boxes? You know, obviously there's a lot of deals with these guys. There's a lot of, you know, Best Buy is a big company and they sell these games, but it's widely known that the profit margin on video games is ridiculously razor thin. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I mean, everyone knows code from, from back in the day. He's on Uh, tool to type now with Derek he ran a little company himself tried to do a mom and pop video game shop he did really well but he would always say these margins you would not even understand if you get direct from the from the distributor you're paying out the ass for these games you're making a dollar five bucks on a game 
If you want to put it on sale, you're probably killing yourself to get rid of it. And then you get stuck with this inventory and you can't get rid of it. And this is discs. This is just data that is useless, essentially. You know, the product is what's on the disc, not the disc itself. And it makes so much more sense to just move the data, shift the data around, make people pay for that, than it does to put it in a box and ship it across the United States on a truck and pay for all the shit. It just makes sense. So I feel like the streaming service portion, it's win-win for everybody. Regardless if it comes from Geico or it comes from OnLive or it comes from Steam, the fact that a publisher can just be like, here's my product, sell a shitload of it, there's no inventory, when, when we lose a little bit of, a, of the steam behind it, no pun intended, we can flip it on sale, do it half price. The inventory doesn't matter. It's just data. And that's why steam works so well. I mean, yeah, I mean you, you've really seen a little bit more of this, I think, LB, as well with steam. But I mean, wouldn't you agree that that's, the, that's a business model that probably hurts us more than we know, but really for the developer is win-win? I mean, wouldn't you agree that they, they lose nothing from this, right? Oh, no, it's absolutely a win for the developer, exactly for the same reasons you said. The logistics of it are done. You don't have to stamp disk anymore. You don't have to ship that stuff. You don't have to warehouse it. It's a huge money grab for them. And I can guarantee that whatever the surface is, it might be slightly less overall, but their profit margin is going to be huge. So it's definitely feasible. And... You know, and maybe them even grabbing this up is more of a, uh, oh, shit, what's the word I'm looking for? Not a copyright, but uh, a patent. Patent, yeah. You know, maybe they've already got something in the plans that kind of runs it, but now they buy, they go after Gaiku because it'll be cheaper to get them instead of going after online. Right. So now, you know, when they, maybe they're getting ready to roll out something like this with the PS4. Maybe that's a possibility. Now they have the patent in-house. They don't have to worry about on live or whoever's trying to sue them for some kind of infringement they got it so yeah. who knows right on well for my final act if you will my final question now after all this news is surfaced and whatnot we all know sony bought them the big news was that obviously microsoft was going to buy on live and everyone thought well, you know that's obviously the next move sony buys geico and then obviously microsoft buys because they don't want to be one step behind right um It came out today that Microsoft has no intention, at least that's what we hear, of buying the service. Why do you think Microsoft is betting against the online service? Let me say, maybe it's because of Xbox Live, but don't you think that if they have this already in place, they could gobble it up. They they have the money to spare. They could buy it. So what is it about OnLive or what is it about that service maybe that they don't believe in? What do you think, Hit? Why would they be afraid to buy it? I don't think th- I don't think they're afraid to buy it. I think they're like we can do that ourselves. I, I yeah, with Xbox Live, they already have the means to distribute it. I, I I don't think I just think they don't need anyone. They can do it themselves. I think they've already been planning this. Tell you the truth, if you look back to all the Xbox 720 rumors, w- one of the first ones that came out was that it was going to have no um, optical drive. Right, you can only download and. Yeah, I, I could see them possibly doing it next generation, like I said before. But I think it's the generation after that that will be full-blown. Like, you definitely won't see an optical drive. You definitely have to have some sort of internet connection. Yeah, I mean, but I yeah. could buy that. I mean, I think the I, biggest thing for them is they're betting on more of the Steam model, which is don't stream it. Let the consumer actually physically download the game, Yeah. right? Yeah, And, and have it on their hard drive and take it where they want to take it. Uh, and do what they want to do with it. Uh, there is one thing I thought of that maybe they the reason they wouldn't want to do it, uh, which is they get to double sell. If they do the download version, you can make people buy it on multiple platforms. You control the flow a little bit better of where it's played. And you can say, well, if you want to buy it for this, you got to pay this amount of money and so on and so forth. So if you push that into the consumer's pocket and you say, you can have it on this Xbox, this hardware, but you, but if you want to buy it on the PC, that's a different platform. We got to sell you the PC version and they can kind of upsell you to different like Battlefield 3. I have a lot of friends. They play Battlefield 3 on the PC, but they also play it on the Xbox. They've got friends on the Xbox. They got friends on the PC. They yep. bought it twice. I'm one yeah. of those assholes. Me I'm pretty too. sure it's an asshole <laughs> as well. Yes, you are an asshole. <laughs> LB, are you yet an asshole? You're not, correct? No, I just have the PS3 on my console. That's it. Good for you. 
Yeah. You are not a consumer so whore. I am proud of you, but your day will come. <laughs> so, so much better on the PC. <laughs> it really is. Though. It's true. You should buy it. You should buy it tomorrow. It's great. No. Nope. No, you shouldn't. Um, but that's one of the factors I think that maybe they don't want to get their feet wet with this service because they have a little bit more flexibility to upsell it, double sell it, whatever you want to call it. Whereas with a streaming service, once you've bought that product and, and, and Gaikai, whatever, they're saying it right in their, in their speech, use it on any platform, anywhere you go. As long as you have a browser, Java and Flash enabled, you're good to go. It's pretty good. I mean, if they're selling the games a la carte, just like any other system... It, and let's say this too, if they wanted to, they could even make games a little more cheaper because they wouldn't have to do all this boxing and shipping anymore. They could finally cut the price. Not that they would, because let's be honest, no one ever cuts prices. But well, on, they on the could. PlayStation Network, when you buy a, a Vita game, it's actually $5 cheaper to download it off the PSN than to buy the physical copy. Ah, I see. Uh, Bone Inhaler wants a shout out, by the way. He's getting a shout out because he asked for one. BC's not getting a shout out because he didn't ask for one. <laughs> so fuck him. But uh, but I agree. I mean, it's I think what it comes down to ultimately is where can they make the most money? And I still believe that at least for now, uh, Microsoft thinks the most money is in downloading games straight to. I mean, we put they put all the all the onus on the actual consumer. We have to use our bandwidth to download it. And we've got to pay for the game. It's win-win. They don't got to pay to box anything, to ship anything. And they can easily get us more access to DLC. Once I think consumers get it in their mindset fully that everything they buy is online with a click of a button, they don't see that money transaction occur. Um, they are always more susceptible to buy the item. I mean, that's. I feel like that's one thing we all can agree on. When you've got that money in your pocket, and this is a lesson my dad told me when I was young, so I'm going to get a little too old to play on you right now. When you got the money in your pocket and you see 200 bucks and you go to buy a pair of shoes and those shoes are 200 bucks and you say to yourself, fuck, here's two, I can see it. And you have to physically give that money to somebody. There's a, something a little bit more in your head that says, whoa, that's 200 bucks. You should probably eat and pay your rent. But when it's on a credit card or it's on like a little somewhere in the fucking cloud somewhere floating in space and you're like, doop, 600 bucks, didn't even notice. It's a little bit worse, right? No, maybe. Am I crazy? Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, you do. Um, well, I mean, that's that's how basically how casinos work too. You change in your cash for chips. So when you're playing, you're you know you're playing. Oh, it's just chips. It's just chips and just chips. You know, and five hundred bucks later, you're like, hmm. Now I got to go eat at the four ninety five buffet. You know, where the food's been sitting out for three days, but. <laughs> Some, some, some casinos have that card where you just put the card in, press a button, and there goes 10 bucks. Yeah. Yep. You didn't even know. And that's and, and like can that. we all agree that's what Microsoft Points' main objective was? I mean, they literally want you to – they want the fuzziest math in, that you could possibly think of when you buy these Microsoft Points. You're like, uh, I think the conversion is like 6 divided by 8 times 4 gets you 300 points. And every time a map pack comes out, I have to like console LB and say – Hey, Abby, what is the what am I buying here? What is the amount of money I have to spend were, to get the product? They were supposed to change that. I don't know. Right, that's I don't know. They're you know, it ended to. up pissing consumers off because they're like they're like me. They're really stupid. I don't want to wake up and do math. I already went to school. I'm done with school. I want to know how much it is, and I want to pay that amount of money or possibly less if I can get away with it. That is the key. Right, Abby. All right, come on. It's really That's not true. that hard. I mean, twenty bucks is sixteen hundred points. <laughs> okay, know, but what when ten what, bucks is eight hundred? But when an know? item's like you know a hundred and sixteen point five points, that's when I lose it. When there's these weird sort of oh well, this map pack is eight hundred and fifty two points. Like, wait, what? What does that work out to? Where is the? How do I carry the one? What is happening here? That never happens, but it could. Anyway, so I think we've all agreed that cloud gaming is somewhere on the horizon. Some of us think it's going to be here a little bit sooner than others. I am of the uh, belief that we will see it, maybe not next gen, but it will. I think we'll see it pop up next gen. Let's be honest, we're already seeing it right now. On Live is a service you can go to. You can go buy 99 bucks. A la carte service, by the way. You buy a game. It's your game to play on On Live until the company goes under. Um, it's not bad. Right? It's a decent service. 
So if you're into that sort of thing, you can hop on the bandwagon now. Obviously, the problem with all of these games are where are your friends? My friends are not on OnLive. I don't know anyone who's on OnLive, and that's nothing against OnLive, but I think right now it doesn't have the circle that Steam has, that Xbox has, that Microsoft has. They're both in the same. Why am I saying both? I don't know. Sony. Um, but now that we're seeing Sony take this technology and this will hopefully be rolled into their online service, maybe we'll actually see some people on this service sooner than later. LB, what are your final thoughts before we roll on out? Don't have too many. No, you don't. You don't have many regular <laughs> thoughts. Final thoughts are like a whole nother world for you. Mm, that's like an additional. That's two. Thought, that's, if you will. How many Microsoft points would that cost you to think of something? 932. 932. That's right. Yeah. What do you think, Hit? Um, yeah, I, 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 in the next 15 years, I think we'll definitely see it. Um, I don't think it'll be next gen. It'll be the gen after that. Uh, o- only because Microsoft can still sell hard drives to people. Yeah, they yeah sell down, download the games onto your hard drive. Buy the hard drive from us. Um, but yeah, it's definitely around the corner. We'll definitely see it next gen somewhat. And uh, yeah, this probably is the future of gaming. There we go. You heard it from Hit. It is, in fact, wow, the future <laughs> of gaming. Uh, and with that, we're going to wrap up the show. Uh, we would do new releases, but to be quite honest with you, this, this week it's a little sparse. Uh, there is one release that I can even maybe slightly talk about because there's a game I did a little beta on, which is called The Secret World. It's an MMO. The only reason I'm mentioning this is because obviously everyone knows I like to play MMOs. That's the first reason because I'm a total loser. But the other reason is because it's a little bit different. Uh, It's a modern day MMO and it's set in, I think it's London, I want to say London, New York and somewhere else. I can't remember. Uh, But it's a kind of a cool concept. It's $14.99 a month like all these MMOs, which don't get me started. I'd rather be free to play. But I like the idea. Basically, you go around and this MMO is set in a modern day world. And you sort of, it's almost like cloak and dagger type shit. You know, you see, you, you discover the Loch Ness Monster and you, t- you find zombies. It's all the myths and things you, you know, heard about as a kid brought to life in an MMO setting. So kind of cool. It's made by, um, oh God, I can't remember who it's made by now. It's killing Gaiku. me. It's, it's made by Geico. <laughs> you can also get this, you can get insurance on top of it. You pay fourteen ninety nine. that covers you for health, dental, and you get to play the MMO. It's fantastic. Car insurance is not part of it. Um, but other than that, not a lot of cool games. We've got some map packs from uh, from Max Payne and a couple other things. So we're not going to talk about that. But next week or hopefully the week after, we are going to try to talk about asynchronistic gaming. That's the theme that we really want to attack. Uh, I guess the best way to explain it is go look at a Wii U. One guy's got this weird fucking controller. The other guy's doing something completely different. So that's going to be hopefully next week, if not the week after. Um... As always, my two lovely co-hosts, or one of them, two of them, I don't know. We're trying to get rid of LB. We're trying to phase him out. God <laughs> damn it. That's the key. <laughs> you, you, can, Judy. <laughs> it's thick and thin, bitch. You can fi- well, I'll just, have, I'll just have to eat more sandwiches. That's all it is. I can do this. I can fatten up. I already am. <laughs> you can find me at Twitter, at Dude I Rock, D-O-O-D-I-R-O-C-K. LB. Where can they find you with your sexy gunners? Well, actually, you know what? I, I, I do have a tangent. All right. I I'm going to give necessary. you like two seconds because literally this show is ending on time for the first time in history. <laughs> so you, you get you <laughs> well, have you know, one fucking minute. Uh, all right. Well, if you haven't read it, there is the gunner review on the front page. And in that, in case you don't read it, there is a exclusive too old to play 20% off code for a purchase of gunners on their website. So... Go to the article, read it, and it'll take you the link and give you the code. See, I've got my phenoms on. And now you can see so much better than you used to. How, how do you like him so far, LB? Don't ask him. He's going to go on a tangent. Don't ask him. The <laughs> no, show will end on time. <laughs> I've had for a while. Nope. Nope. D- d- stop it. <laughs> we can't edit this. It's live. And you can reach me at Twitter <laughs> at LBSUTK. Fantastic. And where can they find you, Hit? Yeah, they can find me at i6hitman on Twitter and my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash i6hitman. And don't forget to head over to that channel whenever you can. He's always streaming and always hit this channel up. Follow us, subscribe, whatever you got to do. Send us money. 
cookies. I don't care. Feed us. Um, and we will see you next week. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been Thick and Thin with LB and Duty and Hitman. <coughs> oh, look at See, someone's calling into the show. Oh, my God. This is the greatest show ever, by the way. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Yeah, do this. Do this. Get hung up on. Bam. Oh, there damn. Go. See? That's how much he cares <laughs> about this show. <laughs> I love it. So Did they actually hear you say that? So uh, maybe, but the headset's right over there. Probably heard something. <laughs> I mean, it's only uh, it's a short tangent. It's only telemarkers that call them there or right. the previous people that knew the previous person with this thing. I'm uh, like, no, gotcha. Maria's not here. Right. Get off this line. I'm going to call anyway. in every day now. I'm going to prank call you during the show. But uh, no, so reviews. What do you? Th I mean, you, would you agree that time makes time heals all wounds, hype wounds? So I know their their personalities, so I know what they would like oh and what God. they wouldn't like. Wow, <laughs> B, dude, you are blowing up. <laughs> you should wait, answer wait, this on the show. Hold on, hold answer on. this on the show. This is great. This is good. This is good for the show. Look, you got the headset on. This is fantastic. Mac Odyssey, this mic. <laughs> No, Marie's not here. She's no <laughs> he no. called that shit. He called it. No, no, <laughs> Maria is not here. Uh, on this week's show, the topic. Oh, and, my, oh my God. God. This what is awesome. I've, we've had technical difficulties, but this Back takes on. the cake. Who is it? Maria? No Maria here. <laughs> this is a business. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is great. No. 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 <laughs> that, was, that was pissed off, LB. I, I, I pray to God that there's one more phone call. That's, I just want one more phone call because I want to see LB get up and throw the phone across the room. That's really <laughs> the key to the show is... Oh, please, someone call. Please find the number. Yeah, somebody call that number. <laughs> Ask Maria. <laughs> Hello, is Maria there? Is this no. a business? Can I talk to LB? Uh, anyway. Gunners, 20% off. Front Gunners. Page. Check it out. Aren't they called <laughs> Gunars? <laughs> no. Gunars. They're only Aren't called they? Gunars by the wrong 